This is Live with Ryan Reese. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. I was just sitting in here with my friend Sean McKeon and Mark just talking about me eating six tacos on the way here. <laughs> and was it you that sent me that post, the Nacho Libre? And it says, all of you oh, guys yeah. have been waiting for my summer body, yeah. but you're going to have to wait till next year. <laughs> Pretty exactly. much, yeah. That, that's been happening to me lately. It's on home. You know, I, I, the same thing, man. I'm like, dude, I want to stay in shape, like Mark was saying right now, for my kids and everything. But man, I love tacos and I want pizza that taco. and chips and salsa. My uh, my boxers are doing backflips. <laughs> <laughs> <That's so laughs> There's a problem. But you know what? I live in Southern California, and we got mm. Mexican food everywhere, and I'm just going to go for it. So that's <laughs> yeah. it. Well, anyway, we got a very special guest in studio tonight. We got my our friend, uh, Mark Munoz. Um, I met him back in probably 2012 when we were doing the Threat to Formalize Religion Conference. Mm -hmm. And I don't even remember how it all happened. Oh, yeah. right in midnight. That's right. Ryan Midnight Ryan connected Midnight. us. Yep. And he just showed up looking all sketchy at the at a church. <laughs> He's like, hey, you want to meet Munoz and Jake Ellenberg? I'm like, the UFC fighters? <laughs> yeah, but who are you? <laughs> That's true, right? That's the way he rolls, though. That's the way he rolls. He knows man. everyone. Ryan so Midnight. we met up, and you know what? When we met up that day, it was like, it's just like, I don't know. We had this, the you guys were men of God. Yeah. And we could feel that that That's that right. spirit that connected us. Amen. And uh, you showed up at our conference, and I didn't know what the heck to expect. But we were like, last minute, you guys showed up, yeah. and you guys walked on the stage and like, like took the oxygen out of the room, <laughs> and everyone was just like focus in, yeah. and you guys yeah. delivered a sick little message for yeah. uh, for everyone. And it's we awesome. haven't talked really that much, just kind yeah. of texting yeah. since. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's it's just awesome to have you in the studio. And yeah. tonight um, we just were talking about one story, and it was <laughs> epic. So we want to get into all the stories tonight. All right, all right be a man. great show. For all sure. right, be so awesome. um, well, really quick, I was at Washington D.C. last week. They did this event mm -hmm. called um, Reset or Together 2016, mm -hmm. and it was a prayer meeting at the um, on the lawn of Washington D.C. And they were expecting a one million people to show up, mm -hmm. but I think. They counted roughly around 700,000, maybe more. Mm -hmm. But that was the largest event I've ever been to. And when I went there, it was people from all different churches. There was, it wasn't just like Calvary. It was like, you know, they from Hillsong to Francis Chan wow. to, wow. Um, they had um, Josh yeah. McDowell, Ravi Jeremy Zacharias, Camp, right? Ravi Zachariah, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But you could feel the presence of God there. It, what's insane is even the yeah. Pope endorsed it. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. you're like, the Pope? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how he got in the mix, but he got in the mix. Uh, but it was cool, though, that um, it, it was all these people coming together and praying. And it got so hot. It was like 92 degrees, but it's in Washington, D.C. And it was, I think the humidity was like 70%. So people were dropping oh, out, like wow. falling out, like passing out. Wow. So they had to bring like... Um, city buses, air conditioning to put people inside. The medics were maxed out. So literally we were bringing waters from backstage, giving it like my wife and, and Ronnie and a couple other people were giving waters to the people in the front, right? Because we were in between the stage and the front barrier. Yeah. But then they had people, they were hosing the people down with a fire hose wow. because it was so hot. But um, they had to cancel the event six hours early because it was just getting too gnarly, too hot. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you right now, when, when Hillsong and them were playing, I couldn't even sing. They were playing that mm. ocean song. I felt the Holy Spirit so thick in that place that yeah. like, you know when you can't even sing, you're just mm -hmm. like crying pretty yeah, much. Falling. It was amazing. Mm. It yeah. was super amazing. But um, awesome. we were praying for revival for the yeah. country and to see what God wants to do because we are in those days and it's it's crazy out there, you mm -hmm. know? But um, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight with uh, Mark Munoz. I mean, Mark, you just out of the gates, you're you're a huge UFC fighter. We know you're retired now. We're gonna get into all that. Yep. But um you were uh you were kind of a big deal. Or you are a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of a big you're, you're, deal. You're, 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 you're retired. You're, yeah. you're retired now. Yeah. You're doing amazing things now. But um yeah. I mean, I know Sean over here, you know, he's mm. 
we, we were both big fans, and and uh, Sean was geeking out the fact that you were going to be in here <laughs> earlier. And he might, he's white. He might turn red. I'm, you red, know? I'm <laughs> Irish, though, man. So. See? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, how did it all begin? I know that you were born in Japan. Yep. yep. But you're Filipino. I am Filipino. <laughs> so my dad was actually uh, in the Navy. So there was a lot of Filipinos that enlisted for the Navy. And so, um, so a lot of people would... would uh, relate to me there but but yeah my dad was in the navy and um was born in japan he was stationed in japan and moved to vallejo california and um you know when i was in vallejo you know i i got into football and basketball like so all the major sports are 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 just um popular so football baseball basketball mm -hmm. You know, all those all those sports are are just like the number one sports here in Vallejo. So and that's what I got into. I got into football and <clears throat> and basketball. Didn't really get into baseball too much. So I did I did basketball and football. So I, I played football pretty much since I was in fourth grade. And you know, I had you know just thoughts about being on the you know Forty Niners, you know San Francisco Forty yeah. Niners, and and uh, you know, and so you know, I actually uh, got a you know. Went through since fourth grade to ninth grade. I was playing football and wanted to um, get a f scholarship, yeah. you know. And so um, got on the varsity, got on varsity as a freshman. And, you know, um, and I actually accepted Christ into my life as an eighth grader. And my sister was watching me. She brought me to a volleyball tournament. I started playing volleyball with her. Mm -hmm. And at this volleyball tournament, there was an outreach um, community Bible Church in Vallejo does a little outreach in volleyball, and and uh, one of the one of the speakers said tonight, if you were to die tonight, are you one hundred percent sure you're going to heaven? I'm like, oh, phew. yeah, man, I'm. I think so. I'm, I think I'm one hundred percent sure. Like I'm a good guy. Like I haven't I haven't done anything bad, but I think I'd go to heaven. But then he said, you know, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Um, and it's not because of what we do, but it's because His grace has lavished upon us that you will exceed, you you will you will you will enter enter the gates of heaven. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, all right. So I'm gonna accept Jesus Christ. So that was the year I accepted Jesus Christ. But that same year, <clears throat> my eighth grade year, I uh, for Christmas I got some J's. Which are Jordans? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, and I'm not streetwear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wear Vans. So you, <laughs> I was go. like, wait, what are Jays? Are they Jordans? <laughs> He's talking about Jordans right now? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so I got some Jays, and I had some Jays on my feet. If you don't know that song, Nike look, Jordans. All right. Yeah, Nike Jordans. I had Jays on my feet. So if 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 you don't know that song, Jays on my feet. Look it up on YouTube. You get a kick out of that. But um, you know, Santa delivered, man. Yeah. He and the yeah. elves made me some J's, put it on the sleigh, <laughs> flew off the North Pole, <laughs> went down my chimney, and lo and behold, on Christmas Day, man, I opened up some J's. I couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah, I got some J's. Dang. So I put them on. I went straight to my Nerf basketball hoop over my door. It was slam dunking just like Michael Jordan, like, ah, tongue out I'm and a, everything. I'm going to have you pull closer to the mic because the yeah. sound guys are looking back up. All right, okay. There. All right, all right, all right. right. So you're, all right. Okay, so you're, yeah. going, you're going bonkers. You got the Jordans. Yeah, I got these Jordans. And then next school day, very next school day, I'm wearing these J's. And I'm walking through the hallway. And then to the right of me, someone says, hey, yo, break yourself off for them J's. And I'm like, wow, that didn't sound right. You know, and so I'm like, <laughs> well, let me let me scurry away from this. Let me walk away from that real quick. But he was actually bullying me for my shoes, you know, bullying me for the very things I have on my feet. So, so, so there's four types of bullying. And I, and, you know, I didn't know this at the time, but there's verbal bullying. Anything that comes out of your mouth, that's a threat or insult. Second type of bullying is physical bullying, laying your hands on somebody, inflicting physical harm. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a third type of bullying, which is social bullying. Uh, social bullying is leaving somebody out out of a group activity because you're too cool, That's or interesting, or spreading rumors about somebody that oh. taints their reputation. That's so crazy. that's that's social bullying. And then the fourth type of bullying, I don't know if you had to deal with it, but I didn't have to deal with it. I was young. Is cyberbullying. No. And that's everything that happens on social media. Oh, I, I get you know? cyberbullied now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I do too. <laughs> People cyberbully all the time. I you know? We call those guys too. keyboard gangsters. That's right, <laughs> keyboard warriors. <laughs> they don't want to see us in real life. No, no they get smashed <laughs> out in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, and those are the four types. And you know, I was I got verbally bullied, and, and I'd like to play basketball. Like I said, I, there was a, there was an open gym. 
I played basketball at that open gym, and you know I had my J's off, so I had a J, I had my J's on, so I had to I wanted to take them off because I wanted to keep them nice and fresh and clean, you know. Right, right. So I put them in my backpack, hit them underneath the bleachers, and then after I was done, I put them back on. And I had to walk home. Well, as I was walking home, I had to walk through this pathway that had a chain link fence on one side and a brick wall on the other side, and and um, it was about two hundred yards long. So that's two football fields in length. And I was walking through there. I do it every day. I walk through and, uh, you know, there was five guys behind me. I didn't think, I didn't think anything of it. I see five guys. You've been guys. down that trail a number of times? A <laughs> yeah. number of times, you know. And so I'm walking down this trail and then I look back and it's all good. All of a sudden I get in the middle of the pathway. And all of a sudden I hear footsteps running. And then they look at me. And I'm looking back and I'm like... Oh my goodness! It's so going it just down. Just got, got real. <laughs> so I started running, but they're already full speed, you yeah. know. And I started running. It's not that I'm slow, <laughs> but they they were already there, and so they tackled me down, held me down, and started bullying me from my jays, mm-hmm. um, taking the very things off my feet and beating me, kicking me, and I couldn't believe it. At that time, I had all these emotions in me. Man. Wait, wait was, what, what, what year was this? This was when I was in eighth grade. Eighth grade, so yeah. Like, like early um, 90s maybe? yeah early 90s okay. I mean, i'm 38 so 36 years ago yeah. right. <laughs> so um you know it's it was you know at that time i had all these emotions in me man i was i was angry i was anxious i was sad i was like all these things like i couldn't do anything about it and and um you know and getting kicked and punched and you know it was just like man this is crazy like why why me you know and and um and you were a big guy because you were already you're playing football yeah, yeah i was big i weighed i weighed 150 pounds at the time you know and so um so so you know that might be an analogy on somebody else's life you know yeah. you might not be physically held down by somebody but you might be you know held down by a certain circumstance in your life mm-hmm. you know but i'm here today to tell you that there's that God allows you to stand up underneath that and he allows you to be successful and rise above that adversity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm just I'm gonna tell you my story here thereafter, but I didn't know what God had in plan had planned for me, but that was in that was in his plans. For and that, that was to like happen. A, a big step. Like that was a, a big th- step. Things change in your life. Yeah, I mean that that right there, except Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior as in eighth grade, um, at a volleyball tournament. Never thought I'd ever do that in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I started going to youth group. I started going to, you know, start playing the guitar and all this stuff. And, and it's just like, man, you know, this is cool. And I get, I get jumped from my J's. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I, I fake being sick for three days. Mm-hmm. I'm like, <coughs> Dad, I'm, I'm sick. I can't so you go, don't to go to school. I don't want to school. Yeah. There's 160,000 kids today, every day, the deal that, that get bullied. You know, one of those four types of bullying, 160,000, 13.8 million Mm. a year get bullied and they don't want to go to school and they're fearful to go back to school the next day. Mm. And then bullying incidences lead to other bullying incidences because if I get bullied, I want to bully somebody else. Mm -hmm. Right. But it also leads to cutting. People cut themselves. And suicide. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You hear about that all and the time. Suicide. You know, people people hang themselves because mm-hmm. because they they deal with it at school. Then they deal with it on social media. They feel like they can't escape it. So the only way to escape it is, you know, to, yeah. to do, do things that way. There, yeah, there, was, there was a really quick, there was an article I read <clears> on the news the other day. Some Someone, a girl was taking a shower, some teenager and one of their teenage friends Snapchatted mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. A bully. Yep. Shower. I heard about that. Yep. Posted up online. The girl committed suicide. Yep. Yeah. See, I mean, it's 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 rampant. You know, people. It. I mean, people, people bully, bully, and they don't think it's bullying. But, mm-hmm. but you know, I'm here to spread awareness mm-hmm. and yeah. here to to do that. And and um, you know, now it's like, you know, it's crazy how how, you know, things that happen to yourself as personal experiences. Because I always tell people that your life experiences shape and mold you into who you are and who you become, right? For sure. But even more importantly, your life choices do that even more. I can tell a lot about who you are by the choices you make in your life and not the choices like, like, oh, what type of what type of shoes am I going to match my shirt today yeah. or what type of toothbrush am I going to use? No, no, no. Choices, real character choices like your friends, who you hang out with, mm. what you watch on TV, what are you filling your mind on the internet, like, those are the types of things, character mm-hmm. issues that that I'm talking about. And, 
you know, those which, which relates to what Jesus says, you know, a good tree produces good fruit and yep. a bad tree mm -hmm. produces bad fruit. It's exactly. what comes out of our heart. You reap what you sow, today. right? You reap yeah. what you sow. Yep. And it's exactly right. And so, um, so yeah. So, I mean, just with, with everything that happened to me, it was just like, you know, I, I, with my life experiences, um, got bullied and then a friend of mine, my, my dad goes, okay, son, you're not sick. Go back to school. <laughs> so he sends me to school and uh, I go to school and I was one of those 160,000 kids that, that just was sitting at the table and I was like, didn't want to look anybody in the eye because I felt like if, if I didn't see them, they didn't see me type mm -hmm. of thing. You know, I was doing my homework, you know, mm -hmm. hiding out mm -hmm. in, in teachers in teachers' room. So I would do my homework and then one day a friend of mine goes, hey man, hey Munoz, man, where are them J's at, man? Where are them Jays at? And I'm like, ah, I didn't feel like wearing them today. And he just kept asking me. He just kept asking me. And I'm like, dude, and you know that funny feeling you get in your chest when you start getting emotional? Yeah. And like angry? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you start getting these, like this this feeling in your chest. And I was starting to get angry. Mm -hmm. I started raging. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, he was like, Munoz, man, tell me where you got, where them Jays are at, man. And finally, I was like, hey! I started yelling at him. I didn't feel like wearing my Jays today. And I had streams of tears rolling down my face because I remember how it made me feel when mm -hmm. I got jumped from my Jays. And, and, uh, and I go... I go, man, I told him the whole story, and he goes, man, I'm sorry, bro. Didn't mean to do that, but you need to learn how to wrestle. And I'm like, bro, I, you guys wear tight leotards and touch each other in front of places, man. <laughs> I'm good, bro. Like, I'm not going to do that, man. That's you. That's you, but well, I'm good, bro. And he goes, what? You think that's funny, huh? I bet you I could take you down in 10 seconds. I said, yeah, right, bro. You're 100 pounds. I'm 150 pounds. There's no way you're going to take me down. So I break down in my stance, and I'm wiggling my fingers, and I'm like, I'm going to do magic or something, right? <laughs> and I didn't know how to get down in a stance. I'm like, yeah, what's up? What you got, homie? Yeah. You know? Dude, he shoots in two seconds flat, picks me up, slams me on my back, and I've been wearing a tight leotard ever since. No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, you, that's, if you just tuned in, this is, uh, you're listening to Live with Ryan Reese. We have... Uh, Mark Munoz in studio. You would know him from the UFC, and uh, he's just telling us a story about how he even got into this whole <laughs> thing. So your friend, he's 100 pounds. Yeah. and uh, Works you. Pile drives you. Pile drives me. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> Where's that Ty Leotard at, man? I'm, I'm going to put that junk on, man. That, shoot. If it gives me superpowers like that, man, I'm going to wear it, right? <laughs> so I decide, and as I, I, I say, your life choices shape and mold you. So I... I go to my dad. I said, Dad, I want to mm -hmm. wrestle. He goes, oh, yeah, you want to wrestle? Okay. So you're going to wrestle the first day, and you're going to wrestle the last day, and every day in between. You're not going to quit in between. And I go, sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. I go to the first day of practice. This is my eighth grade year. And um, I'm wrestling, and I'm getting held down and beat up by one guy. He's cross-facing me, and it's like, his forearm's going across my lip, and my lip is bleeding, and my nose is bleeding. I'm like, oh my gosh, man. I, I Man, I don't want to do this. Man. This is this is crazy. So, I mean, how it made me feel when I was getting bullied from my, from oh, my yeah, shoes. That's right. So, I was like, oh, man, I, I'm good, right? So, I go to my dad. I said, and uh, my dad, at that time, was uh, was home. And, uh, and he goes, hey, what are you doing home? I go, um... Uh, dad, I, I, I don't, I don't want to wrestle anymore. He goes, what? Takes me by the arm, <laughs> throws me into the car. He presents me in front of the coach and says, hey, Coach Minahan, Mark Moon is here. See you later. I'm like, no, Dad, don't Just drop you off. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no. So it was a tough, tough thing, man. Yeah. Like, I, go, I went in there and, like, it's, I, didn't, I didn't like my first day. I mean, anybody that wrestles knows what I'm talking about because your first day at wrestling mm -hmm. practice you did not like. You might be crazy. I mean, you might be the small percentage of guys that liked getting beat up, but I didn't like it, and I didn't want to go back. But I, you know, I, I finished. My dad wanted me to finish what I start, and I finished what I started. And by the end of the year, I started going with all the better guys. By the end of my senior year, I ended up becoming a two-time state champion, a high school national champ. I take second at the junior worlds, and I get a full ride scholarship to the to a Division One university at Oklahoma State. Dude, Crazy. that's insane. Yeah. So, and that's the, the, the time I got bullied in the eighth grade 
was the same year I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, right? right. So that eighth grade year was was an amazing year Heavy, for me. Yeah. And and I didn't know what, what God had in store for me or what my plan was, mm. you know? But as you look upon look back upon your life, you see God's sovereignty and you see his hand on you. You know, it's like shaping and molding you. Shaping and molding me. Yeah. You know, Did the and, literally and molding you. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Yeah. You know, and, and during that time, you know, I was wrestling. I, I was in choir. Not not a lot of people think I'm I was a choir boy, but I was a choir boy. Wait, years was yeah. in choir? I've heard I was it all choir. at this point. I was. I was Kids in the volleyball and yeah. in choir. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So you think you know, but you have no idea. <laughs> I was in the choir. It was called Battle Cry at uh, CBC, Community Bible Church in Vallejo. Awesome. We did tours in uh, Canada. We did tours in Colorado and um, the Plain State. You know, I... You know, I did musical. I did an Easter musical. I was a lead role. I was, you know, I did, and I played a guitar, lead worship at my at my youth group, and for a, for a church too as well. So, you know, well, how in the heck did you get into the UFC? Yeah, uh, how, I don't so, even understand this. Like, this doesn't even make sense. So, so I get, I get, I wrestle, oh. I wrestle, and I'm at Oklahoma State. I get into wrestling, and and uh, after I was done, I was like, okay. Uh, graduated. Now I'm coaching at Oklahoma State, and I get a call from this guy at UC Davis. His name is Lenny Zaleski. He um, he started for Iowa University, which is one of the best wrestling wrestling um, programs in the country um, in Division One wrestling. And and he uh, calls me up and says, "Hey, you know, I heard uh, I heard you're gonna move up to Northern California. I mean, uh, yeah, Northern California." And I go, "Yeah." He goes. Would you be interested in coaching at UC Davis? I said, okay. <laughs> so I I go to UC Davis and move my family from Oklahoma. I have a wife and two kids. She's pregnant um, with our third. Which is crazy. And it's crazy. Yeah, crazy move. So we move there and, um, and uh, I meet this guy by the name of Uriah Faber. Mm. He's... I don't know, like five, 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 six. I don't know what it is about me meeting short guys and tell me what to do. <laughs> but, but he's like, bro, you need to, you need to fight. I'm like, nah, man, I'm a lover, man. I'm not a fighter. Man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Well, one day, he uh, he brings in the who's who of the UFC to the gym. He brings in Randy Couture, Brandon Vera, Quinn Rampage Jackson, Tito Ortiz, Frank Trigg, Scott. Uh, Scott Smith, James Irvin, like the who's who the UFC at the time. Yeah, and I'm like, and he's like, yeah, I want you to come work out. And you could teach some wrestling, blah blah blah. I'm like, all right, cool. So you know, taught some guys some wrestling, and then you right comes in. All right, guys, time to spar. And I'm like, oh shoot, man, this is gonna be <laughs> awesome. So I'm fading away <laughs> in the seats. shadows. Yeah, I'm fading away <laughs> in the shadows, kicking my feet up. You know, and I'm like, man, man, where's the popcorn? Where's the soda, man? Like, I can't wait to watch this, right? And then there was nine guys in the gym, an odd number, right? Nine yeah. guys. Everybody gets a partner. And one guy doesn't have a partner. He walks into this cage, and, and I'm like, man, I can't wait. I can't wait for that guy to get a partner, man. He's about to rough somebody up, man. I, I can't wait. And it was Randy Couture. Yeah. He was defending his belt against Tim Sylvia in three weeks. And I'm like, whoa. A legend. Man, a legend. has been around legend. forever. Legend. Legend. Right? <laughs> so, I, I mean, I've been I've been doing some training every, you know, every now and then with Uriah. And I'm like, okay. All right, cool. I'm, he's 5'5". Five, five. But, yeah. You're right. <laughs> yeah. He's 5'5". Five, five. <laughs> but this is, this is Randy He's also Couture. looking for the yellow brick road. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so... So I'm putting on this stuff and Uriah's like, hey, he comes around, he comes along and he goes, hey, Munoz, can you do me a favor? I'm like, heck no, bro. <laughs> he comes with a pair of, pair of gloves, pair of shin guards and a headgear. I'm like, no, bro, I'm going to walk in there and spar this guy. Dude, I got a wife Randy and Couture. kids. I got a pregnant wife and some kids, man. Are you I sure got to be a friend. Yeah, I know. Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, dude, he goes, all I got to do is double jab, double leg, you'll be fine. I'm like, what is double jab, bro? <laughs> am I, am I going to swing like a like, like a fairy and like hit him, man? Like, no, man. Shoot, I'm good. And he goes, dude, d double jab, double leg, you'll be fine, man. Just, he didn't have a partner. So I'm like, okay. He goes, you train before, you'll be fine. I'm like, ah. 
<laughs> so I'm putting on his headgear, and his headgear is like a big pillow on my head. I can barely see through the eye slot. I mean, it's like I'm getting claustrophobic in his headgear. And I put on my gloves, and, and these are gloves where it's, it's four ounce gloves. It's padding just to cover your knuckles. Yeah. And I'm like, is that, is that we, what they normally use in the yeah, ring? That's yeah, those ones, right? Yeah, four ounce gloves. Yeah. And I'm like, man, are we supposed to hit each other with these, <laughs> man? These things are little bullets on my hands, man. This is crazy. And I'm like, man, man, this is crazy. And I put on my shin guards. And I'm like, dude, you're right. These shin guards don't feel right, man. I think I need a bigger size. He goes, no, man, they're on backwards. Put them on right. I'm like, ah, oh, dude, are you cool. serious? Hey, what, what's Randy Couture doing <laughs> right? at this point? Look at you going. Who is this guy? He's right? like, this what is going to be fun. Right exactly, now? man. I wish I could fly back in time and think like what he was thinking. But, but anyways, <laughs> so I'm putting on this stuff. I'm like, gosh, dude, what am I doing? And you're, and Randy was waiting for me. He was like shadow boxing in the cage, like, <laughs> doing like looking smooth. And I'm like, dang, am I supposed to be doing that right now? Like, And I'm touching my toes, like <laughs> stretching my hips, like spinning my torso. I'm like... Man, am I supposed to be doing that right now? Like, I don't even know how to throw a punch right now, man. That's crazy. Dude. So, so your eye goes, all right, guys, time to spar. I'm like, oh, man, you know, your sympathetic nervous system is responsible for two things, right? Fight or flight. <laughs> well, I didn't have any wings on my body, man, so I couldn't fly out of that cage. So I'm like, okay, it's going down right now. I'm about to fight this guy. So, so. I'm swinging for the fences. Like, he's coming at me. I'm like, swinging, boom, boom. And your eyes like, jab, jab, double jab. I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> doing this stuff, like trying to, trying to punch you. No, straighten it out. So I'm straightening it out, and I'm getting him. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm snapping oh, wow. His, like, <laughs> I'm snapping his head back. I'm like, dude, this is crazy, right? He's like, double leg. And I'm like, shoot the double leg. I missed it the first time. I'm like, dang, man, this, this is crazy. And he's and he's hitting me too. And, and I'm double jabbing. He's like, double jab, double leg. And I'm double jabbing, double leg. And I missed it the second time. I'm like, dude, man, this is crazy. This is not going my way. Finally... We're going, and I see his back against the cage. I'm like, oh, this is my time. So I double jab, like, fiercely, like, boom, step in, boom. And I put my hands, and I wrap my hands around his legs, and I got my hands locked, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. You're about to take him down. My <laughs> hands are locked behind Randy Couture's legs. Like, <laughs> and usually when my hands are locked, I'm like, dude, I'm finishing. Yeah, yeah. Going he's done. Dude, he's done. I pick him up. I slam him on his back, and I'm like, dude, there was a party going on in my body, man. I'm like, what? Dude, I just took him down, and I hear you right. Ground and pound. I'm like, what? So I'm like, ground and pound. I'm like, boom, I'm raining punches from the heavens, man. And, and Randy looks up. He goes, hey, 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 hey. We don't actually try to knock each other around in practice, <laughs> man. I'm like, oh, dude, my bad, bro. I thought this is what we're supposed to be doing. And so calm goes, down, no, Turbo. No, no. <laughs> it's just practice. Like, yeah. yeah, he goes, I got three weeks. I can defend my belt in three weeks. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. Dude. All right, I'm trying I'm to cool, defend cool. my belt. You're trying to knock me out in practice. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so, so then I, I, I you know, I, I, you know, I just throw like less so I'm going like 50% in my mind you know I'm going yeah. 50% and then he gets up right and he spins me he he clinches me spins me against the cage knees me in the body elbows me in the chest and I'm like wait 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 <laughs> hold on bro like what are we th I thought we weren't supposed to be doing this man <laughs> and uh man I had the time of my life man and Uriah comes up to me he goes and he hits me in the chest and slaps me he goes Psh! he goes see bro I told you, man, you're snapping his head back, taking him down. Like, you need to get into the UFC. You need to, you need to get into MMA. I'm like, ah, oh, man. Then Randy sat me down. He goes, man, you need to you need to get into this. And that's how I got into it, man. And I uh, got into it and started training at Uriah's gym and, you know, got into... Uh, well, you know what? Hey, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to be going to break here okay. in a couple seconds. All right, right. But that is That is epic. epic. <laughs> first, first fight, Randy Couture. Heavyweight champion at the time, <laughs> living legend, destroyed guys for many years. Yeah. We have that Mark. Is epic. We have Mark Munoz in yeah. studio, and um, the the last half is going to be even more epic. I mean, yeah. that the first half was ridiculous. That, that's that's some uh, good stuff. Yeah, you guys always know you can uh, also tune in live to the stream at ryan-reese.com. Always go to ryan-reese.com for. Uh, archives and all his shine studies and also the whosoever's where you have all the product and everything we'll catch you on the other side of the break peace
Lab with Ryan Reese coming up. Everything all right? Sure. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say... whoop de doo to live with Ryan Reese. Loud noises! We are back with Mark Munoz in studio. Uh, the, la- the first half was insane. He was just talking about how he um, got into the whole um, wrestling deal and it was by him getting uh, his Michael Jordans, his Jays, <laughs> taken off his feet, jumped, and that led him to go to wrestling and then from that just progressed to Randomly being in a studio training wrestling and Andy Couture, Tito Ortiz, and all the other A list dudes from the UFC walk in and they walk in with nine guys <laughs> and they start sparring. So here's Munoz chilling, watching, watching it all go down. And then it turns out that the ninth guy was um, Randy, Couture. Randy Couture and he didn't have a partner. So they threw. <laughs> Mark in the ring with his shin guards backwards, <laughs> small gloves, huge and headgear. he never fought fist to fist in a situation like this. And he's going with with the legend, and uh, turns out he had what it takes, and that took you into a fight in the UFC. That's right. If you want to hear That's more, right. you're gonna have to go to my website and listen to the story. And I suggest you do that <laughs> at Ryan Reese. Uh, Ryan-Reese.com to hear the whole podcast. <laughs> so okay, so now you're 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 in USC. Yep. You're going. Give us some mm-hmm. highs and lows of how it all went down for how, your career. How quick was it after that sparring session? Were you in the UFC? Man, I was in uh, just short of a year. I was quick. in the UFC. Yeah, it was quick. Um, you know, I fought. I fought uh, twice in the in the PFC, which is Palace Fighting Championships. Fought once in the. Um, king of the cage Mm -hmm. and then i got called up into the wc Mm -hmm. and fought there twice and then boom the wc yeah the d the the wc um had uh uh, higher weight classes and then they uh they took the higher weight classes out and then they they took because the wc was ran by zufa which is ran by the ufc and so they took uh, a select few from the wc and brought them up to ufc and i was one of the select few that's amazing um so so yeah, it was it was crazy. Is um, you know, I decided to fight, and in just a little short of of a year, I got into the UFC. Hmm. It's nuts. That's amazing. So now yeah. you're 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 going through the UFC, <clears throat> and uh, you obviously mm-hmm. you've knocked some people out, took yeah. some people out, ground and pound. We've seen a lot yeah. of your fights, <laughs> and then um, you went through the. Towards the end, you you kind of went through a depression. 
How, yeah. how did it, what, what happened during that time? Because, you know, so, just because before you get into this, like yeah. depression is huge. Yeah, it is. Huge. It is. And I know there's different degrees of depression mm -hmm. and people have to be medicated for it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and, and I didn't, I wasn't, it wasn't that se severe for me, but, but there was, there's a lot of circumstances going on in my life at that time. I, you know, my, uh, my partner for the gym and I wasn't wanting to get into a gym at all, but, um, he asked me, he goes, Hey man, you know, um, my partner and I want you to be involved in this gym and we want you to, uh, you know, once you be a part, and I'm like, oh, cool. Like, let me know what you need to do. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll teach, whatever. He goes, no, 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 we want you to be a partner. And I'm like, what? Okay, partner, uh, you know, you just tell me what to do. And so at that time, like, I was partnering up with this guy named Andre Julian and Michael Guyman. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I was like, okay, whatever you need me to do, right? And so, so we partnered up, and then in 2012, around there, there was the financial crisis, right? Oh, it yeah, hit, right. it hit, and um, you know, and and my partner, my business partner, Andre, said, "Okay, hey, I need to step away. You need, you need to, um, you know, I'll sell you my shares, and you need, you need to take the gym." I'm like, "Wait, hold on, I don't know how to run a gym, man. Like, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> wait, wait, wait." And so I started running the gym. <laughs> wait, and, wait, wait. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't know how to do this, man. So he, 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 he kind of help me out but yeah. you know and then my wife stepped up christy she's amazing um she stepped up and you know i was fighting in the ufc and trying to tend to a gym and coach fighters and coach my club and i uh, have a wife and four kids and appease all my sponsors you know and mm -hmm. so it was like you know i'm trying to be an elite athlete and do all these things it's it wasn't happening so yeah. Over. So, much. so it was too much. It was like overload. I was burning the candle on both ends. And, um, so the gym wasn't, um, wasn't making ends meet. So I was having to put in, in the gym every month, you know, with my, you know, my fighting was subsidizing the gym. And so I was like, okay, this is not working, you know? And so this was a time where it was like a lot of stress on me. And, and, um, and I noticed that my body was breaking down. Um, I, I, I didn't have the zip or the, or the, or the the explosion I, I wanted to and and I was I was winning fights and I ended up getting a fight against Chris Weidman mm -hmm. um, and Chris Weidman he um, he's a former um, middleweight champion and and he um, he uh, you know at the time I was a number one contender and he was, we were fighting for number one contender that would have gotten <clears throat> Anderson Silva that was that a big Anderson, time that, that would have like got Anderson Silva yep. yeah and so. Um, in that fight, you know, I just, I didn't feel right, you know, and, and uh, you know, I had the worst weight cut ever. I had to lose like 30 pounds that week of. <laughs> the week of. The week of, four days I had to, I had to lose 30 pounds. I did it. And it was the hardest weight cut ever. And then I, <laughs> and then the day of the fight, I put on 35. <laughs> yeah. Wait, and, wait, really uh, quick. How do you lose thirty pounds? In a, yeah. So Sean a lot needs of, to know. A lot of, <laughs> but it doesn't it's last. Very unhealthy. <laughs> it's very unhealthy. You lose a lot of water weight, and you don't feel good. And yeah. And like my, I felt like my back was hurting, but it was my kidneys. You know, my mm. kidneys were, oh, were hurting, and I was like, oh man, dude, can you massage my back? And they were massaging my back, but I was like, your wait, wait, yeah, it was my kidneys. Mm -hmm. You know, and so they're tender to the ch touch. So, um, so yeah, I, I fought that fight, and um, and I noticed I just couldn't push off my back leg, and and I fake a shot, and he took me down with ease, man. It was just like he was, he was just controlling me and um i get back up and you know i fake a shot and i try to overthrow a overhand right and he lands an elbow and uh and you know that's another analogy on your life you know it's mm -hmm. like you know there's there's unforeseen things that might happen to you mm -hmm. you know um but but it's in those unforeseen things that god is still in control you know mm -hmm. and i didn't know at the time i get hit i mean people get hit by cancer people get hit yep. by a heart attack but your life doesn't end. You don't stop competing. Mm -hmm. You still compete to the best of your ability, and that's and that's how it was. And my life is 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 an analogy on on um, on my fight career, on everything that has that has happened. So during that time, there was a lot of things happening to me. Mm -hmm. I get knocked out, and uh, you know I needed some money to to subsidize the gym, and you know I needed some money for rent for my house, and yeah. and uh, I lost and. 
I lot, wasn't, that's a heavy burden. I, and I wasn't getting the money, you mm -hmm. know? And so that was the one thing that spiraled me down. And I was like, oh man, this is crazy. This is, what am I going to do? You know, I broke, and I noticed when I did my med checks at the end of the fight, my foot was broken. Wow. Yeah. It I happened know, in the fight? No. It was prior. It was before the fight, and I didn't even know my foot was broken. Mm. And I had to tape it, and I had to do some stuff, but I had a, I had a, a fracture in my uh, in my fifth metatarsal, my pinky toe, my mm -hmm. my my the lower bone underneath your toe. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that was caused me not to be able to explode. And so um, I didn't know I was fighting with a broken foot, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, I was in this cast and then, and then they told me I wouldn't be able to fight for a year. But, man, I needed to get some money. I needed a fight to get money, yeah. you know. And so um, so it was, it was a tough time. And so, and I didn't fight for a year. So I was like, you know what, if I'm not going to fight for a year, I was like fat bastard on Austin Powers. I ate because I was sad, and I was sad because I ate. You know, <laughs> like you know his character on Austin yeah, Powers. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, I was like, man, dude, I'm I'm not gonna fight for a year, so I might as well eat, man. So that's how it was, man. It was an endless cycle of like you know, munching on stuff. Like and like being sad. That now. That's you know? kind of where I'm at in my life <laughs> <laughs> with the tacos and everything, right? The tacos over here. <laughs> yeah. But you know, and so you know, I didn't, you know, and 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 I think a lot of people can can um, can relate to me is. You know, I went to comfort foods, you know, I couldn't do anything. And, you know, I was like, you know, at that time I was like trying to do things on my own and not relying on God and not, and not trusting in his sovereignty. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't doing that at the time. And, you know, I was like, okay, well, I need to do this. I need to be able to provide for my family. I need to do this. And so, you know, there was all these things happening in my life and, and, uh, it just kept spiraling down and I'm like, man, how am I going to make ends meet, you know? And, um, and that's, that's what happened. So, um, finally, finally I had, um, I went to a men's group and Kenny Luck was speaking over at Saddleback church. It was called the herd Ended up going to the herd. And, um, you know, I, I heard him, you know, he spoke upon Jeremiah 29, 11, mm. Says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. And when he preached that that message, I was like, okay, Lord, I know you got me, mm. you know. And uh, I just mm. I just wept, and I was like, okay, I'm just spinning around like in a circle, trying to do things on my own, but without you, I can't do anything, mm. you know. And so. Um, and that was the realization during that time. And then, and then, you know, I was like, okay, I need to start, you know, I need to start training. I need to start losing weight because I was 265 pounds get back on the program. and I had to get back on the program. I had to, I had to make weight at 185. If you, you know? just tuned in, you're listening to live with Ryan Reese, I have Mark Munoz in the studio, uh, big time fighter from the UFC, just talking about his story, his journey through. <laughs> getting into the, the to the UFC, winning, losing, and now just um, calling on God to show up in his life in a, in a desperate place and yep. coming out of the of, out of depression. And maybe you're going through depression right now. Whatever mm -hmm. it is, this is the story for you. There is a way out, mm -hmm. and it's through a walk mm -hmm. with Jesus Christ and only Christ. Amen. Amen. So I um and during that time I you know I. I had to get back into it, and I called. I called on my uh, my trainer Todd Norman, and he's like, "Man, so he took pictures of me, and I didn't want to take those <laughs> pictures, but he had he he in his mind he was like, okay, we're gonna go through a transformation, and people need to see this. So I took those a picture. pictures. Yeah, and you were two sixty five yeah. at that time. Two sixty five, man. And you fought man. at one eighty five. Yeah, so I end up losing. Eighty pounds. I end up losing seventy six pounds. I think 76 pounds. I think that's how much I lost. I lost my 10 year old son <laughs> at that time. You know, he was, he was weighing 78 pounds and I lost my 10 year old well, son. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, so yeah, so, um, my, 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 my trainer, Todd Norman took a picture of me and he was like, he was, he was, he went through YouTube, started posting stuff on me and says, Warrior Just straight out of the gates, straight out of the gate. You know, started posting stuff Dang. about me, and and um, you know, he didn't he didn't keep he kept the picture later. Oh, okay. And then and then um, 
No, he, but he just started posting stuff about me training. And um, <clears throat> by the end, you know, in July, I think July 1st, I had lost like 65 pounds. Wow. And, uh, you know, it was, it, was, uh, it was a time where I was like, okay. Uh, he, he took the picture of me um, five months ago yep. and then put it side by side. And then we called it going from obese to beast, <laughs> right? Nice. So, so we called it from <laughs> going from obese to beast, and uh, you know we put that on social media and said, you know, this is this is what happens when when uh, you put your life back in the mm. where you, where you put your trust in the Christ and and what you need to do and put your, get your priorities straight and and uh, so that that was a great because you have a lot of followers, obviously. That yeah, that's you just straight ministered encourage him encourage yeah. and your your yeah. following is not a christian obviously there's yeah. some but. yeah but see it was it was a hard process man i'm not saying it was easy it it was very hard um there's a there was a there's a switch in mentality where you know there's there was times where i'm like oh man i don't want to go to training today or or there were times where 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 i didn't want to eat the way i wanted to eat. you know i yeah. wanted to Vegetables. i wanted to go i want yeah i wanted to go back into my like Eat because I was sad. I was sad because I was eating type of thing, you know. Yeah. But but I can't go back to that. Yeah. So, you know, it's like it's like going back to the sin that mm-hmm. that you've you've you you fall into. You know, you can't go back to that. You know, and so so for me, it's food. You know, and I knew. When, and, you know, when you said that, really, when you were saying you had to like discipline yourself, I thought about that yeah. verse when Jesus says, "If you want to follow me, you got to deny yourself, mm-hmm. pick up your cross, and follow me." Yep. And that goes from what when you came out of yep. being obese. To denying yourself, your body appetites, yep. but you were also de- you, in that in that denial, you were following Christ as well. Yep, and that, that that's what people have to yeah do. And, and adversity, you know, yeah. wait, there, you have a lot of like adversity that's gone through in your life, yep. and just so, people that are going through, to stuff right <clears throat> now. Sometimes you yep. feel like, man, why do I have to go through this? Or where yeah. is God in this situation? Yeah. It's usually not until weeks or months, and even years pass. We look back, and then we have like twenty twenty vision, yeah. like you said, like when you were younger. You see how God had your hand upon your life, even going yep. through a horrible that's thing right. of being bullied and that's the right. thing that drove you into wrestling. That's right. You know that right. that where you excelled at and the yep different steps and yep. now going through this depression this is mm-hmm. another season another stage mm-hmm. but through it all the lord will always show himself to yeah. be faithful in our lives right yeah amen and i heard this i heard this quote it said um and i don't know who said it but it, I, I read it and it said um i'm thankful for my struggle because without it i wouldn't have stumbled ac- across my strength mm. you know and it's so true so many times we go through some adversities but we have to go through that struggle, you know, to, to get stronger. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like it's just like if you were to if you want to get stronger physically, what do you got to do? Yep. You got to struggle through some weight. You got to struggle. You got to struggle with that heavy weight. You know, you got to lift that heavy weight to get stronger. And it's the same thing that God is doing in your life. He's we're a lump of clay, and He's the potter, mm-hmm. and He is molding us, and He is shaping us. You know, and we have to be wet. I mean, the the clay has to be moist. Mm-hmm. If it's hard, then it's just going to crack underneath the pressure, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But but when it's wet, he can mold us. He can make us. You know, into into what he's as into what he wants us to be. Into mm-hmm. that into that vessel. Yeah. And I believe I I also believe <clears throat> that like as he's forming us, he makes us into a vessel for a certain chapter in our life. Mm-hmm. And then he breaks you down, That's smashes right. you, and then he yep. remolds you That's right. because he keeps you because we're instruments for his glory. Amen. So he keeps shaping us and uses us for different times, different instruments for different times in our life. Amen. And for then sure. he fills us up with his Holy Spirit, torrents of living water. Yep. And um, <laughs> we overflow, and that's how. And then That's we right. just pour out ourselves as a liquid offering and to, yeah. to him. That's right. That's right. You know, there's that verse that everyone knows and loves, and it's Romans 8, 28, that we know that all things work together for those who love God who are called according to his purpose. But the key is actually the next verse 29 that says the purpose. It's to conform us in the image of his son. And that's just shaping us, molding us. Those, like Ryan was just saying right now, to the men that God has called us to be or to the women that they have called him to be. You know, so you talked about going through this major depression or, you know, tough loss with Chris Weidman. You, you go through this big, big stage. You still had some f- more fights in the UFC, yep. you know, after yep. this big weight uh, mm-hmm. cut. You mm-hmm. had your first fight, right? Yep. And it was against uh, Tim Boach. 
and Tim Boach had an incredible win um, against uh, 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 Okami. Yep, Okami yep. knocked him out. He uh, did some, uh, um, what was it, some... Uppercuts? What? He had some uppercuts. He did some dirty boxing, oh, yeah. dirty boxing, and knocked him out. And uh, I was like, wow, man, this guy's yeah. this guy's no Brother. joke. He's he's legit. And so I um, had a fight against him, but, you know, I had, you know, I knew that that my skill set was good enough to beat him. And, and I went into that fight knowing that if I put the fight where I wanted it, that, that I can come out victorious. And, and uh, you know, it says in Psalm 144.1, it says, Blessed be the Lord my rock, for he quits my hands for battle, my fingers for war. Mm-hmm. You know, and, uh, you know, that was a time where, where David was getting, was getting, you know, approached by every side, by, by his enemies, mm-hmm. and they were wanting to kill him. But, but he knew that, 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 that God was going to, was going to help him. Yep. And he, and he was equipping him for battle. And so, you know, David, man, I, I think that David, man, he was a, a warrior, God, man. He was, he was a man after God's own heart. And, um, he ran to the battlefield because he knew he'd find God there. And that's, that's the same thing with, with, you know, God gave me that same spirit. Mm. And, um, you know, and so when I went, when I, when I came back and that was my comeback fight, I, you know, I had 90%, um, uh, 90% um, land ratio. I landed 90% of my punches. That, in that fight? In that fight. Dominant. I threw over 200 punches and I landed mm-hmm. over 200. It was That's crazy. Insane. Yeah, it was crazy. So, um, so yeah, so that, I mean, and, and, but, you know, life was still hard. I was still trying to, trying to make, make ends meet for the mm-hmm. gym, still trying to be there for my family and it was, it was tough. It was very, very tough. Um, I ended up losing three fights after that and then winning again and losing and, and that's in a whole yeah. emotional <laughs> highs and lows. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. So, um, but you know what? You look back and we always, we always, we always talk about God's sovereignty mm-hmm. and how his hand is on everything. You well, know? we know, you know, I know, I think we have like five minutes left, but um, I know now you're not in the UFC, but you're doing a lot of cool stuff. It's like you're in this new chapter. <laughs> yeah. Like God has molded yeah. you, shaped you all yeah. through this whole yeah. time in your life. And right. now, um, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. I know you're training kids of yep. all ages yep. and you're speaking. Tell us about those. Mm-hmm. So I have things. my wrestling club. It's called Rain Wrestling Club. How, how um, do people find it? Uh, so you can go to um, uh, rainwrestlingclub.com. Okay. Um, you can look up Rain Wrestling. You can Google Rain Wrestling Club. Cool. Um, or you can go Rain Wrestling Club Mark Munoz and you'll find it. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I coach anywhere between you know, five to six year old kids all the way up to 18. Mm. Uh, and then, then I, you know, I, I, I do that. And I also, also am <clears throat> working on a website right now that will be able to, you can log on to the website, subscribe to it. And, and it's only $10 for, for, um, uh, for, uh, videos mm. on wrestling, Greco, freestyle, folk style and also wrestling for jujitsu and then wrestling for MMA. Mm-hmm. That website's uh, thewrestlingroom.com. Um, and uh, you know, for for all my speaking engagements I do, I, I you know I have an anti bullying campaign now. Yeah, that's awesome. And we talk about that's God's awesome. sovereignty. Yeah. Um, I partnered up with the Orange County Department of Education and they heard my story and now they want me to go out and give my my testimony basically. Yeah. On, um, on just rising above adversity, and um, you know, I talk about I talk about my story, and and we talk about you know bullying and bring up issues of bullying and and these like um, uh, what do you call them uh, assemblies? Yeah. No so way. I've had over over two thousand kids in assembly. That's epic. Uh, yeah. I mean, anywhere from you know, I, I went to juvenile hall. I went to you know the uh, youth learning. Academy. I went. Yeah, I went anywhere. to. I went to like um, detainment centers for kids that are at risk. You know, I went yeah, there. And, yeah. You know, I've I've been able to do amazing things through this through this uh, through this program with the Orange County Department of Education. So, um, so I'm doing this, and God has opened the door for different things, man. I, you know, um, I'm I'm blessed. You know, it's it's still hard. I mean, I'm not saying it's 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 a yellow brick road. You know, I'm not saying it's that, but but. Um, but I'm, you know, 
I know that, you know, I'm putting my trust in God. You know, it mm-hmm. says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll make your path straight. So there's over 7,000 promises in the Bible. But in those promises, there's a premise, right? Mm-hmm. Right? So it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding. That's the premise. And then after that, the promise goes, and he'll make your path straight. Right, okay. so over seven thousand promises, but there's over seven thousand premises mm-hmm. for the promises. You know, it also says in in um, in Philippians four six and seven, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything um, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Mm-hmm. That's the premise, and then after that it says, then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Right. I think the hardest thing is the obedience. Yeah, Through that's it. tough. <laughs> Through the trial. Because yep. you be tested. Tough. We're yeah. all tested. Yep, that's right. And that's your struggle, man. Mm-hmm. That's the struggle. And, you know, it's it. You know, it's it's just apparent, but that's how God is molding us. Yep. He is completing us every day. You the, know? There's seasons, you know, <clears throat> and uh, I believe it's in Luke when it's talking about the temptation of Christ, you know, a couple mm-hmm. of the gospels have it, but it's a particular thing it says there. And after the temptation of Christ, it said that Satan left for, and he came back at an opportune time or Mm -hmm. a season. He left for a season Mm -hmm. and he comes back. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the Christian life, just as the fighting life, there's peaks, there's valleys. Mm -hmm. And in those times of going to the valleys, you know, you think of Psalm 23, you come to find the character of God, that he's going to lead you by the still waters. He's Mm going to be with you through the the valley. Psalm 23. I mean, that's the the real deal, man. And that's for everyone, everyone that's listening right now. Yep. And that's that's the thing, too. It's like like in Psalm 23, it says, um, it says, God will make you lie down in green Mm -hmm. pastures make you lie down he's not saying oh you know he's not suggesting it he's making you lay down because he wants to restore your soul Mm -hmm. he wants to lay you beside still waters and he wants to restore your soul and that's the thing sometimes we're doing everything every we're going every which way trying to do things the way we want to do it but god's like nope i'm gonna make you lay down Mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna lay beside still waters and i'm gonna restore your soul you know and he says my rod and my staff it will comfort you, you know? And during that time, the rod was meant for what? Discipline, right? Mm-hmm. And if you if you spare the rod, you'll spoil the child, right? So mm-hmm. he made sure he disciplined us, you know? Well, we have about 10 seconds. Left. Oh, my bad. No, my bad. no, that's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. a great ending. <laughs> right. we're, we're over. <laughs> yep. This is the end. All right. Hey, thank you, dude. That thank was amazing. Yeah, was thank amazing. you. Thank you guys so much. We love you, man. Love you guys. Love you guys too. Peace. This has been Live with Ryan Reese. To connect or find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.